What is up fellow game developers, my name is Tyler Potts and today we are going to be creating a trajectory line just like this which is actually super accurate even after a long flight time. So as you can see here we've got this trajectory line which follows, if we let go you'll see it follows the trajectory perfectly. Uh, the best thing about it is you can change the gravity scale, the drag or any of these values here. So let's say we go to five on the gravity scale you'll see that it it's a bit harder but it will still follow the line perfectly we can add linear drag let's say four um so if we click and we push actually because it's it's bending a lot more because the <laughs> linear drag is so incredible so it's like doing some really crazy things right now um and angular drag again i'm not i don't even sure what angular drag does but it still works the same as it always should that is where we're at to right now. So let's actually create a, or create this script. Okay guys, we're gonna start by creating a new Unity project using Unity 2D um, or the 2D template. Um, and I'm just calling it trajectory line tutorial. So I'm just gonna click create and that is now gonna create a template. So I'll see you once that is done. Okay guys, we're now in a new Unity instance. First thing we're gonna do is create some sprites. So I'm gonna go into our create and I'm gonna click on square. I'm then gonna right click inside the project area again. I'm gonna go sprites and click circle. I'm then gonna do drag a square into the scene. I'm going to set its, oh, its X position to zero, its Y position to minus five and its scale to about 20. I'm gonna add a box collider to this. Uh, of 2D and that is all we need for our ground. So I'm just going to rename this to ground. I'm then going to create a or drag in a circle where on the scene. We're going to pull it about here. We'll say minus. Oh, keep clicking the wrong things. Let's just do minus seven and about minus four. Um, and that should pull it on top. We then need a circle collider 2D, a rigid body 2D. Uh, we need to, I'm going to set the graph scale by 3 to default and I'm going to freeze the rotation on the Z axis. Once we got that, we will also need a line renderer. So what we're going to do is go add component and I'm just going to type in here line renderer. Hit enter and as you can see we get a new line renderer. I'm going to remove the current size, hit 0. And then I'm going to put this at about 0 0.5 and double click in here. Drag it to the end and bring it to right near the bottom there. I'm going to add some corner vertices, let's say 10 or 20 for the corner vertices and 10 for the end cap vertices. Um, oh, not 190, Jesus. Um, once we've done that, I'm going to add a new material. I'm just going to use the default line material um, so we can actually see a white line. And for now, that should be it. Also, this has reset itself. Why are you resetting yourself? You're not allowed to do that. Cool. So I think that is it. Oh, we've got some random error. That's fine. No need for that right now. And I think the rest of that is all good. So now we're just going to rename this to ball and we're going to add our script to this. So this is all we need for this. We're just going to add the ball control script in, create, create new, create an add. And that is going to add a new script to our thing. Once it's rendered, we'll go double click this to open it up in Visual Studio Code. It's going to make this full screen and drop that. I mean, we're going to zoom in one. And let's bring that up. Cool, so the first thing we want to do is create uh, a few variables. The first variable is going to be a public float called power, which is equal to about 5F. Oh. We're then going to create a rigid body 2D, and we're going to call this RB. We're then going to create a line renderer, and we're going to call this LR. And finally, we need a vector 2 called drag start position so if you guys have watched my tutorial it's um, called how to create a um, drag and shoot so where you click on the screen you drag and your mouse and you release to shoot the ball um, that video you can find in the description of this uh, video down below but for now let's create a start method and in the start method we're going to say rigid body is equal to get component and we're going to say rigid body 2D. Once we've done the rigid body 2D, we're going to duplicate it, do the line renderer next. So we're going to say line renderer. And that is it for our start method. Let's scroll up here. We then want to create an update method with a few different uh, functions in it. So we're just going to say update. So inside our update method, we're going to create, we're going to say if 
input.getMouse button down and we're going to pass through the zero which stands for the left mouse button we're going to say drag start position is equal to camera dot main dot screen to world point and we're going to pass through in here is the input dot mouse position now what this will do is um, set the drag start position to our, where we first click down on the screen um, and world coordinates and that's what the camera dot main dot screen to world point does that converts the mouse position from pixels to world coordinates we're then going to create an input dot get mouse button zero which is actually going to be what we use to do our line renderer and finally we're just going to say if input dot get mouse button up let's update the b there and we're going to do zero again. We're just going to now get the end position too. So we're going to say factor two. We're going to call this drag end position. It's equal to a literally the exact same what we set here, but down here. So what we're going to do is in here, we're going to say we're going to create a new factor two. Call it underscore velocity. Set that equal to drag end position minus drag start position and we're going to times that by our power which we created as a variable further up and all we're going to do is say rb dot velocity oh not underscore velocity just dot velocity is equal to underscore velocity we're going to hit save and if we now just go back to unity we can click input does not take get oh i spelt mouse button down wrong Someone probably already noticed that and it's been complaining to me the whole time. I apologize. Let's click clear and let's just hit play. So now we should be able to drag and when we release, you can see the ball gets shot. So if we drag a little bit and just shoot, but we need to get our line rendering. So let's go back to um, the script and I'm going to now create a new, um, a new method that returns a, a vector to array. We're going to call this the public vector2 and call it plot. Um, what we're going to pass through here is the rigid body 2D and we're just going to call it rigid body. We're then going to pass through a vector2 position, a vector2 velocity, and finally an integer called steps. Uh, the steps is how much you want to render off the line. So how many line segments you want to render. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new vector to array. Call this results. And set this equal to a new vector to and pass through the steps. We then want to create a time step. Which is going to be how long uh, through the... Uh, in the air time, we're going to basically multiply everything by. So delta time divided by physics 2D dot velocity in iterations. We're then going to create another effect or two. We're going to call this one gravity Excel. And this is going to be the speed our, um, the speed of our velocity how quick it will speed up by the gravity uh, so now we need another physics we need to get the physics 2d and we actually need to get gravity so we're going to say dot gravity why is this one not oh I actually put a dot that's supposed to be a divide or a forward slash uh, and then down here we're going to say times rigid body dot gravity scale so we're including the gravity scale of the actual we're including the whole world's gravity and the gravity scale of the actual player and then we're going to pass through our time step which is going to make sure it's in line and we're going to do it twice um, that just makes sure we're getting the right time we're then going to do a float drag and it's going to calculate the drag so we'll do one f minus time step times rigid body dot drag we're then going to create a vector 2 and this one's going to be called move step and we're going to set this to velocity 
times time step. Now, this is very confusing and it's just basically a lot of maths. Um, you can find all these formulas on the um, internet. <laughs> um, so each one will be something completely different, working out the drag, the graffiti and um, the move step. We now need to loop through all our steps. So we're just going to say four. If we, if I do it right, four. I'm just going to use the pre-baked one here. Uh, int zero, and then the length. I'm going to change to steps, and let's put that there. Oh, there we go. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to say move step is plus equal to the gravity acceleration. So we're going to add our gravity in. We're then going to do another move step, but this time it's going to be times equal to the drag because uh, we want to apply the drag and then we're going to get our position which will be our current position and we're going to multiply it by the move step so the move step all that does is tells us how f where our um, character is or how far our character has moved during this calculating in the gravity and the drag um, and basically just telling us where he's moved since and then we're going to add that to our current position and that will get us our new position and then we're just going to say results i is equal to the position and then at the very bottom we're just going to return results now that seems very complex and it is pretty complex you can actually find a reference to this on the internet i'll probably leave a link in the description below to where you can find this formula um, but all this does is basically work out where each point each step of your line renderer should be placed so back in our update method we need to get into our get mouse button, which means we're still dragging. And we just want to create, we basically want to copy this because we're going to re-need this here. And then what we want to do is say factor two, and we're going to say, oh, we're going to call this a trajectory. Tra trajectory, that seems about right. And then we're going to call our plot function. Now we need to set pass through our rigid body. So we're going to say RB. We then need to pass through our um, we're going to cast it as effect two, but we need to pass through our current position. So we're going to say transform dot position. We then need to pass through our velocity, which we created above, and then how many steps we want. So how many segments we want. I'm going to start off with 500, which is quite a lot. Um, but you can change this depending on how far you want to see the trajectory line. Um, remember the more of this you have the more calculations it has to do which could cause performance issues you want to mess around with this value to work best for you what you then need to do is go to so after we've added the trajectory we want to create the line renderer and we want to say position count and we want to set the position count to the trajectory dot length now that means we have the same amount of positions as we do um, the same amount of positions as we do trajectory plots and what we're finally going to do is we're going to create a factor 3 array because we need to actually convert our factor 2 array now into a factor 3 array and what we're going to do is call this one positions and we're going to set this equal to a new uh, factor 3 and we're going to pass through the trajectory length so we set the positions and then we're just going to do a loop int i is equal to zero i is less than trajectory dot length again we're going to say i plus plus we could also do positions dot length because we've, we've actually already set the length so we could do e for all um i'm going to say then positions i is equal to oh, positions i is equal to trajectory I. So this is just going to convert it to effect to three. It's a really simple method of converting each one. And then we're just going to say set positions and we're just going to pass through positions. Now that should do it for this. Um, I'm going to change this back to trajectory because we've used trajectory everywhere else and positions is just a new one so it doesn't really matter. But this is what we're going to do here. Um, and now if we go back to our um, world, we're going to let the script compile. Once it's compiled, I'm going to click play. And now if I drag, you can see we now have the trajectory line. Now you can just fire however you want, change anything you want, and it will follow it perfectly. And that is how we are working today. 
So if you enjoyed this video and you learned something new, please subscribe, like the video and share it with your friends. Leave a comment if you have any questions and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and peace.